Greetings, 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 family, friends, and the world. This is Mikael Eric Harris, better known as the Jews, also known as the Alkaline Water Guy. Water guy. Today is August 31st, 2024, and today is the Assembly of the Righteous, and we're here live on what should I say this is the evening, the beginning of the evening, which is 12 o'clock. Usually I go on at 4 p.m. But I'm beginning to uh, come on at 12 p.m. That's my thoughts uh, on the Sabbath day. And beginning of the evening instead of uh, the mid or late evening. So this is 12, 12 p.m. Detroit time, Central time. No, Eastern time. 12 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we're live on YouTube and Michael the Juice Harris, that's M-I-C-H-A-L space T-H-E space J-Y-C-E space uh, H-A-R-R-I-S. And uh, y'all, we're also on uh, TikTok as Mikael the Juice Harris as well, but it's condensed. And we're also live here on um, on Instagram at L K H Y Y M underscore the juice. That's T H E underscore J U I uh, T H E L K H Y Y M underscore T H E J U I C E, which is Lakine underscore the juice. So the, um, that's uh, Instagram. You know, this is very short clip right here. One more time. Get that started. So as I was saying that um that we're here live on Instagram at LKH YYM underscore the juice as well. And we're live here on on uh Zoom. The Zoom is uh the long version which will be recorded and uh on part one and part two. So this is the full version on Zoom which will be transferred to YouTube, Patreon and Rumble. That's YouTube, Patreon, and Rumble. Other than that, uh, I'd like to thank y'all for being here, coming in. And like I say, today is the assembly of the righteous, meaning today is the word of the Father, what the Father has said or, or always asked him to bring to us what it is that he wants to his vessel. So other than that, we'll get started with first the commandments on the Sabbath day. We'll be reading the commandments out of Exodus chapter 20. Thank you, Father. And um, afterwards, we'll be doing the prayer. And after the prayer, we'll be playing the theme song for the day, which is Fast and Pray. Then after that, we're going to go through or come with whatever the Father has for us to speak on today. So other than that, we got the supporting theme song on today, which is, let's see what the name of this is. It says, Brit Yah, Brit Yah, and the name of it is, what does it say? Release me when I fall. Rise me when I fall. I can barely see you. Rise me when I fall. Beautiful song. This is the uh, supporting theme song, besides the theme song being Fast and Pray. Nice little song. But right now, what we get ready to do, I'm going to pause this real quick. And we're going to start off with the commandments. So we're going to start with the commandments, which is in Exodus chapter 20, starting at the first verse. This is the Ten Commandments. All righty. The Ten Commandments. And Yah, God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the uh which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Verse 3, the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Verse 4, second commandment. 
Thou shalt have uh, um, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yah thy father, am a jealous father, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. At the end of the, the second commandment, beginning of the third, verse 7. Thou should not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And by uh, breaking one of the first three commandments, you broke all three of them because all three of them to each other. Uh, if you know that or not. I've shared this many times before. But by breaking the first commandment, when you put anything with the Father or after the Father's name, you put it there with the Father or before the Father uh, or the Creator. By doing that, you break the second and third commandment as well. And just by doing that in general, you made another God or deity right there with the Father. So you break the first and the third commandment with the second. And the fact that you are, uh, you are, uh, when he said, uh, thou shalt not take his name in vain, meaning the commandments, the law itself in vain, which is the first two and all of them, you've broken the first three as well. Plus, if you take the name or uh, the law in vain, meaning if you disregard the law, you're taking the Father's name, which is the law, in vain. The law is his name. All right? Because it represents him. The fact that it represents him, it doesn't actually need a physical name like humans or like people. You represent the Father by the actions and the things you do, which is the attribute, which is the law. Fourth commandment, starting the eighth verse. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days should thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yah thy father. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Verse 11. For in six days Yah made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in the midst, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Fifth commandment, verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which Yah thy father gives you. And that land is wherever you go. Honor thy father and thy mother. Sixth commandment, thou shalt not murder. Even though it says thou shalt not kill, when you kill without a cause, it's murdering. Verse 14 and uh, seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery which we know that when you lay with another man's woman, which is his which is his wife, you're committing adultery. And when a woman lay with, uh, any woman that has a man lay with another man is committing adultery. Eighth commandment, thou should not bear false witness. Uh-uh, thou should not steal, should I say. Thou should not steal when we all know when you're taking something that belongs to someone else is just stealing. Ninth commandment, thou should not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And we know that when you bear false witness, it's nothing but lying. That's bearing false witness. And the 10th commandment, which is 17th verse, is thou should not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou should not want thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. We should not covet, which is wanting something that belongs to someone else. Other than that, we thank the Father for the reading of the word of the law. And we're going to go into prayer. Then the main, then the theme song for the day, which is fast and pray, then going to go into wherever the Father has for us to speak on today. Bliss be thou, Father of the universe, that bring forth all living creatures forth from the earth. Bliss be thou, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Bliss be the Father of Israel. Bliss be the Father of 12 tribes of Israel. Thank you, Father, for all you've done, been doing, and plan to do. We ask you to keep giving us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, life, health, and strength. Food, shelter, and clothing. Let us be happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, and prosperous in all that we do. We ask you to keep leading and guiding us that we can help lead and guide others in your knowledge, your word, your ruach, and your way. We ask you to keep your armor of protection around us. Help us in every way. Open our eyes to the things that we have not known, to the things we need to know that we can grow into. We also ask you, Father, to forgive us about us, our ancestors, and our forefathers of the sins we have done against you, 
your law, and your word. We also ask you, Father, to keep us in every way. And also, Father, in helping us lift the, the spirit of deep sleep from, above, from among us and allow us to awaken to your light, to your word, and to your way. We ask you to help us in every way, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, financial, or spiritual. And in all these things we pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Uh -huh. Say again, son. One more time. Way Zim. 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 We go. This is fast to pray. This is our theme song for today and every Sabbath day. Fast and pray. Something we need to be doing at all times. Fast and pray, and fast and pray, and fast and pray, and this is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray, and fast and pray, and fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray, and fast and pray, and fast and pray. And this is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray, and fast and pray, and fast and pray. This is the reason why I say, if you fast and if you pray, you'll hear from the Lord, the Bible say, just drill in your heart. You'll be off to a good start. Just be sure that you're sincere and the Lord will hear every bit of all your deeds, good or bad. Take heed. Fast and pray. Peace and love. Peace and love. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say. One day, two day, three day, four, sometimes five, maybe more. Sometimes four and sometimes three. And that's that far and dry you see. And you must convince yourself it's true. And this is one way you can do it. First day, eat every six hours. Second day, eat every 12. Third day, don't eat at all. Fourth day, try to starve. Fifth day, try to make it through. Sixth day, drink a little juice. Seventh day, eat a little too. And within the week, You'll get the answer you want to see. It may not come the way you expect, but your answer you will get. And maybe you fell and couldn't make it in. That's the prayer all over again. Baby, can you bring me some water? Thank you. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say that. You can do just as the first as I told you. Pray six a.m. nine and twelve. Three p.m. at six or well. Nine p.m. the first is Lay down all night. Six a.m. wake up my friends. Start the process all over again. Fast, 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 fast. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast, fast, fast. And fast and pray. And this is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. And fast and pray. And this is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. And fast and pray. And this is the reason why I say let's fast. All right. All right.
Wind fast and wind pray. Think about the creator each day. Talk about your business is true. Keep your mind on the Lord, you must do it. In order to release from your sin, repent, and don't do them again. If something evil comes about, keep on fasting without doubt. Drink alkaline water of nine point five. Then your healing will arise. Sometimes leave your children your life. Matter of fact, even your wife. Sometimes it's things you must do to prove. That we're true. The Almighty will see you through. That's straight from me to you. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say let's fast and pray. And fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is what we need to do today. Let's fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast and pray. This is the reason why I say it. All right, all right, all right. All right, before we get started, let me see. We got someone over here on uh, Instagram. We got S Daily 530 has joined. Hi, can I purchase T Mika? Yes, you can, my sister. Um, uh, it won't be today. I don't do any uh, work on the Sabbath, but yes, you can purchase. If you'd like to text me, just to share with you the information, you can text me your name, number, and email, and I will um, and I will text and email you my price list my links, and all my flavors. That's my price list, my links, and all my flavors. I do about 60 different flavors, but you can uh, text me at 770-572-5315. That's 770-572-5315. You can text me there, and I'll text you all my information. And if you'd like to get it wholesale, which if uh, you can get 40 40 uh, teas or more, the, start, the wholesale start at $2 a piece when you get 40 or more. Uh, but other than that, all my information to the, the, the regular price and the special prices is in the, uh, is, in the um, is in the post as well. The first part would be about the water, then you have the information about the teas or the, the flavor, then afterwards to be the price list for the teas on the bottom. I had to separate it because people was getting the, the, the water and the teas uh, together. So that's just for you and anybody else who may want to know about that information, about the alkaline water and the alkaline sun teas, which are brewed in the sun, which is cold pressed, sweetened with agave, and made in the alkaline water. All right. And I freeze them to preserve them. I don't put preservatives to stabilize them because they're harmful to the body. So I freeze them to preserve them. But just to let you know, as you've seen, I did the book like this. I just opened up. And I came to um, 2 Kings chapter 11. I think totally woke up. Yeah, usually I'll be in bed until about 3 th uh, about, about 2 30, 3 o'clock. And then I get up, get ready, and then uh, I usually do um, Assembly of the Righteous at 4 p.m. But uh, as of last week, I got up early and I've been, uh, I've been starting to do them. I, I, I think it'll be good for me to do it at 12. Assembly of the Rights at 12 p.m., which is at the beginning of the evening. A lot of people don't understand that the evening actually starts at 12 noon until the end of the evening, which is uh, uh, the sundown or when the, um, when darkness come in. From 12 noon to sundown is the evening. From sunrise, from dawn until noon is the morning. So you have the morning and the evening. I like to say the sunrise, the rising of the sun, what they call morning, is the first half of the day. The going down of the sun is the second half of the day. So you have two parts of the day. You have sunrise and you have the going down of the sun. So other than that, what some people call morning and evening. But right now, as you see, I opened up, I opened up to chapter 11, 2 Kings chapter 11. Yep. 
or was it 12? I'm looking at what I'm looking at. I was looking at what I was looking at, so um, I seen 11, so that's what we're going to go with. I just want to go to the beginning of it. So right now, this is Athaliah, and that's the best way I can say, destroys the royal seed. Now, before I go on with this, glad that came about, because I can share something for a moment. A lot of people, a lot of people, religious people, should I say, they don't have understanding when it comes to, um, I'm trying to see how should I say this plainly. When they talked about uh, uh, the seed, the, 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 the prince, the king, it talks about the kings, right? And we know our first king, Israel's first king, that is, was Saul. Let me see this real quick. Okay, I texted you yesterday. Okay, great. I got to check my text. Because when I'm out uh, uh, on, on so-called Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm, I'm usually running. And I rarely check my text. Usually when I get to it, it'll be like tonight or tomorrow or throughout that time, throughout that night. Unless I come in, I'm tired, I eat, get a shower and go to bed or whatever I do. But um, I used to get it. I haven't checked it yet. So I will be checking it. Okay. I appreciate you. I wanted to make sure I address you on that as well since I'm seeing it right here. Because um, a lot of time I miss my, my messages. But other than that, like I'm saying, the uh, kings of the earth, you know, the kings of Israel, a lot of people don't even realize. Let me let, let me share this real quick um, while it's coming to my mind. Samuel. Uh, Samuel, was that 15? No, 2 Samuel, because it was David speaking. First Samuel, it well, first Samuel 15, it states, man, I don't know what's wrong with eyes. I'm, I'm looking blurry right now. Right here it says uh 20, the 20 uh second and 23rd, fourth uh, uh, verse, but that's just not where I'm going. I'm going to 2 Samuel for a moment. It says, and Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. And everyone, the world is deceived right now. By thinking that there was a human sacrifice that the uh, the Romans gave the world, which actually is not true, that's something that was given by the Roman the Roman government or the Roman Empire to deceive the world to believe in what they believe because they, the Father never gave a sacrifice of a human. Remember, the actual sacrifice was really to consume for the priests and for a great Savior and to the Creator, right? But a lot of sacrifice was really for consumption for the priests. A lot of people don't even understand that. A lot of these because the priests didn't have an inheritance. The creator was the, the priest's inheritance. So those sacrifices was really for the priests. Like when they got the shoulder and certain parts of the body, the rest of it was just burnt up, right? A lot of people don't even realize what a sacrifice is. A sacrifice is a life given for a certain purpose, which is a life of an animal. That's why we're not supposed to murder when you murder, a, when you kill an animal, you're killing it in order for the to eat, to feed off of it. And that's really a, the sacrifice of that animal's life going to the people. A lot of people don't realize that. So the sacrifice for that life is supposed to be done for a purpose. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of people think that, quote unquote, I'm going to say Jesus died for the sins of the world when that was given to the world by the Roman Empire. But let's finish reading over here with, and Samuel said, have Yah as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice. And that's the key, to obey the creator's word, to obey his law of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And a lot of the whole world is going after the sacrificial lamb, as they say, that the Roman gave to the world. The Romans gave to the world. Um, it said, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken means to hear than, that, than the fat of rams. Verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Right? 
and stubbornness is as iniquity, which is as sin and idolatry. Stubbornness, being stubborn from keeping the word or keeping the law. Uh, because thou hast rejected the word of Yah, of the creator, he has also rejected thee from being king. He also rejected us from being the um the heirs. Well, he rejected us from the heirs. He rejected us at the time from being his children and kicked us out to the world till a, a certain specific time because we stopped keeping the law, right? He has also rejected thee from being king, which is us as Israel, if you, if you see that in a different tone or a different way. But uh, now nah, let's go to 2 Samuel. What I really wanted to get to y'all was this one. This, I think it's 2 Samuel 7. There you go, right there. Right here, check this out. A lot of people think this right here was talking about Jesus, but really, this is 2 Samuel 7, starting at verse 11, right? It says, as the, as, and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, this is the father talking. Matter of fact, let me go start at verse 10 so we can have a better understanding. Starting at verse 10. This is the creator's covenant with David. Mm. This is a nice little, little hookup right here. Uh, let me go ahead and read it from verse 4. I'm starting at verse 4. David plans to... Ooh, boy, I'm starting at verse 1. This is the Sabbath day. Let me start at verse 1 real quick. David plans to build the temple. This is 2 Samuel chapter 7. Right, and this will go good with what it's coming into. David plans to build a temple, right? And it came to pass, Second Samuel chapter seven. This is just going. I'm planning on going on. I'm only going up to uh to probably verse seventeen. I ain't gonna go do this whole chapter, even though it's twenty nine verses. David plans to build a temple. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house and Yah had given him rest round about from all his enemies, right? That the king said unto Nathan, Nathan was the prophet, Nathan the prophet. Now over here in Luke, you'll see after David, it says Nathan. That goes to show Luke is a false book in the, in the scriptures, or shall I say in the New Testament. Go to Luke third chapter, and read the genealogy of, uh, quote, unquote, Jesus. You'll see Solomon ain't there. You got David, then you got Nathan. Luke wasn't even around to even hear any of the voices of Yahshua. This is the reason why the book of Luke is a false book. He's going by hearsay instead of what he actually know. But let's keep it moving. And it came to pass, verse one again. And it came to pass when King, when the king, which is David, sat in his house, and Yah had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said to Nathan, the prophet, "See now, I dwell in a, in a house of cedar." But, hey baby, can you bring me that alcohol? I need to uh, clean these glasses because it was in here one time. I don't see. I was looking for it a little earlier. Thank you, baby. That the king said unto Nathan, the prophet, See now, I dwell in an house of cedar, but the ark of Yah dwelleth within curtains. The ark of the creator dwelleth within curtains, right? Verse 3, And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in thine heart, for Yah is with thee. Now, verse 4, the uh, Yah's covenant to David. It said God's covenant, but Yah's covenant to David. Verse 4, and it came to pass that that night, see, David the prophet just told him, go. He said, oh, thank you, baby. Thank you. Okay. Hold on for a second, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and kind of clean these glasses up. Hope it's not my eyes. Huh? Okay. 
My baby be looking out for me, y'all. I think I had one of these in, in uh in my uh what you hit. Yeah. Kid around here somewhere. I ain't went through it fighting that box right there. That looks a lot better too. Thank you, baby. Much better. I love you, sweetie. No, right? Okay. Uh what we at? Verse four. And it came to pass that night that the word of Yah came to Nathan saying, see, when he prophesied, doesn't mean he did pre-prophet everything that comes out of his mouth because when David was when David was talking to Nathan the prophet, the David was telling him, you know what? The, the Ark of the Covenant, they're just sitting behind some curtains. I want to, you know, um, I think he said that uh, I'm gonna make sure I make sure he said that um Verse 2, it says, And the king said unto Nathan, the prophet, See now, I dwell in an house of cedar, but the ark of but the ark of Yah dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in thine heart, for Yah is with thee. See, he's speaking from his own mouth as a prophet or as a man. He's speaking from his own mouth saying, Well, go, do what you will. You know, you the father's with you. But that night, what happened? Verse 4. Yah is coming in with David. And it came to pass that that night at the that the word of Yah came unto Nathan. So now the father is speaking to the prophet. First, the prophet said, you know, go ahead and do what you can. Do all because the father is with you. Do all this in your heart. Because the father is because the creator is with you. But that night, it came to pass that uh, at that night, the word of Yah came to Nathan saying, go and tell my servant David. See that? Go and tell my servant David, thus saith Yah. Damn. How many people in the New Testament say, thus says Yah? How many people in the New Testament say that? Somebody cut off right then and there. See, when I be making points, people don't like to hear the truth. See, you don't hear people say that in the New Testament, thus says Yah. The Father is speaking right here. And this is points and clues people need to be checking out and these people need to understand when the father is speaking compared to when man is speaking go and tell my servant David thus saith Yah I said thus saith the Lord but thus saith Yah shall thou build me a house for the, um, shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in Verse 6, whereas I have not dwelled in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. The tabernacle and the tent was what they always brought. They broke down when they traveled, but when they, um, when they, um, when they stood for a certain place for a certain amount of time, they set up the tent, which is the tabernacle, right? The tabernacle was a tent. Verse 7. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of, of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, why why build ye not me a house of cedar? Let me rephrase that. Let me re re read that again. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spec I a spec I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build me uh, why build me not? Why build ye me, not me a house of cedar? Verse 8. That was a question. Verse 8. Now, therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, thus saith Yah. This is that y'all gotta understand words when he's speaking. Thus saith Yah. Now that verse, verse 8. Now therefore shall thou say unto my servant David, thus saith Yah of hosts. I took thee from the sheep coat, from the sheep coat, from following the sheep from following the sheep to rule to uh to be ruler over my people over Israel 
Verse 9. And I was with thee wherever, whithersoever, whithersoever thou wentest, and have cut off all thine enemies out of thine sight, and have made thee a great, made thee a great name, like unto the name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. There were many great names built in the earth, made in the earth. And it was of the Father, of the Creator. Number 10, moreover, I, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel. Listen it up. Listen up now. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them and they uh, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time, the children of wickedness. Verse 11, and as, and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people, Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also Yah dwelt, Yah telleth thee that he will make thee a house. Also, Yah telleth thee that he will make thee a house. Verse 12, and when thy days be fulfilled, okay, this is speaking directly to David. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thine father, with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Now, when some people, some people, mostly the Christians, Read this, they're reading it as Jesus. No, this isn't talking about Jesus. It isn't talking about Yahshua. The Father stick directly right here. And verse 12, and when thy day be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. Guess who that was? Y'all know who it was. It was the great king that came after, after David. His name, his name started with an S as far as what we know. He shall build a house for my name, and I will... I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. See, when people see this, they pre-read it straight into the future to Yahshua. And they skip over all the guess reason why I'm glad I came to this to share with you the reason why I was going to go into, uh, I think that was 2 Kings chapter 11. I think that was 2 Kings chapter 11. But we're going to go back because I, it was the, the woman who actually killed the royal seed. That's what we actually going to go into. That's what I opened up to. But I came to this, to share this, to let you understand that all the kings that people neglect through the book of, through the book of Samuel, you can start at the book of Samuel, on to the end of uh, the uh, Chronicles. Samuel, the kings, first king, second king, and first chronicles and second chronicles. All these was kings that came from David and Solomon. Who well, came from David. The first king, the, the first righteous king besides Saul. See, both of them, see, you got to understand. Saul had nothing to do. David is not the son of Saul. David was the next king that came into place. And all the kings after him, after uh, uh, King David, came through his his uh, his his seed, which is the that branch. See, that's the branch. You got to understand. It's a certain branch. You got a tree, right? Israel, well, first Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the tree. But in that tree, you got many branches. This is how you got to look at this. Look at uh, the scripture when it's speaking of. Now, you got certain branches. Some branches fall off, some of them go strong, 
Then you got on one branch, you got many uh, other branches that, that comes off, off of that branch as well as other fruit off that one branch. But you still got other branches according to the tree. But this is one particular branch that come, that's coming from this tree. Still part of the same tree, but it's a certain, it's a particular special branch. Verse 12 again. And when, when thy days be fulfilled, 2 Samuel 7, verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt thou shalt thou shalt sleep with the father, with thy fathers. I will set up thy seed. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will, ex I will establish his kingdom. Verse 13. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne. I will establish, not establish. I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. He's going to establish his king, his kingdom forever, of his throne. Of his, uh, of his kingdom forever. 14. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. See that? Verse 14. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Now, that happened to some of the kings and some of the kings that didn't happen to through, the, through his loins. But it started with the first king after David that established the throne. Verse 15, but my mercy shall not depart away from him. If you notice, his mercy didn't. He lived until he died. And this was King Solomon. This is King Solomon that has established the throne, the kingdom, and the, um, the, uh, the temple. That's why the temple is anointed. See, a lot of people don't understand this temple that was made is the anointing temple because this was the blueprint that the father gave. The fact that the father did it made it anointed. The temple is anointed. The temple was the Messiah. Messiah only means anoint, anointed or anointing in Hebrew. In Greek, Christ means anoint, anointed or anointing in Greek. But both of them, both those words mean anoint, anointed, or anointing in English. That's all those words mean. And the temple was anointed by being of the Father. The Father gave the decree. The Father, matter of fact, the tabernacle was anointed. The Father told how the tabernacle was to be made before they break down and put it up and what's to be done. The tabernacle was anointed. The children of Israel is anointed because he chose Israel. Matter of fact, Abram was anointed. Isaac was anointed because he said that by your through this seed is who we gonna do it. That's the fact Isaac name, I not the name, but Isaac being chosen was called by the anointing, by the word. The fact that it's the word of the father is the anointing of the father. Whether it's on good, whether it's on evil, the fact that the father says it makes it anointing. Because every word that proceeded out the mouth of the father is true. This is what people fail to realize. People fail to realize, they fail to seek, and they fail to see. But it's up to you to get the information. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. Don't forget, Saul passed, remember? Solomon didn't pass. But yet still, he was chastising through certain things that has happened. Verse 16. And thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever. That's why he always talk about David. 
That's why he always talk about David. And this is the reason why from David's point as the kingship and through his kingship through all the seed of Israel, y'all know how many of us are Israel today. What should I say? Through how many of us are through the seed of, of uh, David today? From the seed of David. A lot of y'all women has been killing that seed off, not even realizing. Y'all have been killing kings. Matter of fact, Woo, this just hit me. I'm talking about y'all women today. Mm, and I, what I mean by that, and I don't mean, I don't mean physically talking about, I'm talking about spiritually talking about y'all women today that has had abortions. Y'all have had abortions. Y'all been killing off kings and queens. Y'all don't know who would see that was coming through you. Y'all don't, and who would just thank you, Father? Y'all don't know what seed was coming through you because you don't know that you have been holding seeds of kings and you don't even know it. Y'all have been manipulated by the system, by quote unquote the devil. The devil is a liar, as they say, which is the system, which is a man, which is the system who controls the things that's going on today and has manipulated your mind. Don't forget, Satan ain't nothing, as they, well, I like to say, Satan ain't nothing but a spirit. Or should I say evil ain't nothing but a spirit. The devil dwells within that evil being. That's why you say evil, you put a D on it. Let's just say the D stands for the dominion of the person that is, that, that is uh with that, that evil spirit is within. And that's the system of today. And those who are giving you Planned Parenthood, who has given you abortion to do, which is actually Molich, who killed their children. So I'm saying the fire, but they're killing their children. Let's keep it moving. Verse 15, and, and thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. See that? Before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. The father said it, and that's what it is. A lot of people don't realize it, but that's what it is. That's verse 16. Verse 17. According to all these words and according to all these visions, to all this vision and, uh-uh, uh, verse 17 again. According to all these words and according to all, all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Right? Then it goes in and say, then went King David in and set before Yah, and he said, Who who am I, O Yah? And what is my what is what is my house that uh that thou has brought me hitherto? So it went on to there from verse 18 on through on to the 23rd, 29th verse. But I just wanted to let that be known. The father established the creators, the uh the creator established. David's kingdom through David, through King Solomon, and through the king, through the seed royal, through the royal seed of David. So now we're gonna get to 2 Kings chapter 11, right? Now we get to 2 Kings chapter 11. And the reason why I say I'm, 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 I'm pointing all you women out who is for abortion who causes abortion because it was the enemy who gave you planned parenthood. It was the enemy who gave you abortion in the first place. Uh-oh, sorry about that. Ooh. Sorry about that, sorry about that. So now let's go into 2 Kings chapter 11. At the liar. At the liar. I'm going to go A T H A L I A H. At the liar. We have many of them here today. You are the spirit of At the liar. All you women that for abortion, have abortions, have had abortions, are of the spirit of At the liar. Now, I'm saying this. Why? It's because she destroys the royal seed. She destroys the royal seed. And not only that, she took power. She took over for so many years. Isn't that what women are doing today? 
Isn't that what women are doing today? They're taking over and they're in the place of men. See, the father has an order. The father said it's the creator, the Holy Spirit, the anointing spirit, which joins us to the creator, which where, that's where the marriage of the lamb is, because the spirit is actually the lamb. You'll find that in Revelation chapter uh, 5, verse 5 and 6. But we ain't going there right now. So let's break this down and, and see how the women is at the liar who destroys the royal seed. Now, and when Ethaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. All the royal seed, but here it says seed royal. All the royal seed. That's what the women do. You don't know what child you have is coming to do a purpose in the earth. Y'all have been manipulated by the system. Satan has deceived the whole world. You have been deceived by the enemy. And a lot of y'all don't even realize it. You have been deceived by the enemy, and this is where your Planned Parenthood, this is where the system has taken control over the people, this is where the system has taken control over the earth to try to tell you what to do, what not to do, what to eat, what, what not to eat, give you GMO food, give you certain things out of your q -sips, out of the funds that you're supposed to have at birth. They, they created a whole system against us as a people. And they used our people to kill off themselves by manipulating the minds of the people. That's the only way Satan can, can deal with you. Either through threat, duress, coercion, extortion, which is all fraud. See, a lot of people don't even understand it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. Thank you, Spirit, for letting me share this way it's coming. Because when I saw this, it led me to where I just came from. To let you understand the royal seed, we, we don't know any of us could be David's son. David. Any of us could be called on forget. Everybody looking at the lineage down to so-called Jesus. But you know how many seeds that come from and how many other women have had children since that time? Since way back 3,000 years ago or more? And more, should I say? More than 3,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago, they were just talking about the time of the Roman Empire being starting, you know, not starting to take over, but in power, at the time, and put in, and then placing your Jesus in, 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 in position. See, we in, we in the third day. We in the third day. We in the three thousand years of, of the Roman Empire or the um the fourth generation. We in that day and maybe coming out of it because our time is now. But let's get back to the story. Verse eleven and one. One more time before we jump to two. And when Athaliah, Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, Ahaziah or Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the royal seed, all the seed royal. Yonah is saved. No, uh, Yoash, Yoash, J O A S H, is saved, right? He's saved. But, okay, now, that was just a hitting for, before we go into verse 2. But, Yehoshiba, Yehoshiba, I guess that's what it is. Yehoshiba, the daughter of King Yoram, sister of ah, Ahaziah. Okay, that's the, sis, that's the sister. Daughter of King Yoram, sister of Ahaziah. Took Yoash, J O A S H, the son of Ahaziah, the son of Yoash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him. So that was his, okay. King Yoram, sister of Ahaziah, 
Okay, she's this, okay. Yehosheba, Yehosheba, yeah, Yehosheba, the daughter of King Yoram, sister of Hahaziah, took Yoash, the son of, okay, okay, okay. Yehosheba, the daughter of King Yoram. Okay, he was the king. She was his daughter. And she was the sister of Ahaziah. Okay, she was the, she was the, uh, the daughter of the king. And she was the sister of Ahaziah. Took Yoash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him even him and his nurse in the bedchamber from Athaliah so that he was not slain. Okay, we have to go into verse, we have to go to chapter 10 to come up to this point. Chapter 10 would bring us up to this point, but we in chapter 11 now, because I'm going into her destroying the royal seed. But we get an understanding of who is who at this point as well. Jehoshaphat is the daughter of the king, which which is the sister of, must have been his wife, Ahaziah. Ahaziah must have been the king's wife. And she is, so Yoram, uh, uh, Yehoshaphat must be his auntie. Yehoshaphat must have been the auntie of uh, of Yoram, nuh-uh, nuh-uh, of Yoash, Y-O-A-S-H, because she's the sister of Ahaziah. Ahaziah must have been her sister. I'm just breaking it down as I'm seeing it, as I'm reading it. And they hid him, and they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber of, in the bedchamber of Athaliah. Athaliah. So that he would not, so that he was not slain. So she hid him right under her nose, it looked like to me. Verse three. And he was with her, hid in the house of Yah six years. Six years he was hid in the crib, in, in the uh in the temple. Because I guess what it was is they the temple was off livings at the time unless the people that was going there to worship. And he was with her and hid in the house of Yah six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. See and this is what I mean by the women of today. Y'all have the spirit of Athaliah. Ah I need to go in to read Jezebel soon too. Because a lot of people say people, a lot of people think about Jezebel, but they don't realize that the women are actually more like Athaliah. That's how the women of today really are. Jezebel was cunning. Matter of fact, well, I ain't gonna go into that. I'll talk about that later when I get there. But Athaliah, matter of fact, one more. This right here, she destroyed the royal seed. Make sure I keep her because chapter 11, said key chapter 11 is really important for people to really see today, to have an understanding of where a lot of our women stand today and they can't even see it. You have to read the scriptures, start seeing, you can see yourself as a mirror image in the scriptures plenty of times. But a lot of people have been taught and spoon fed what they know. They've been taught to know certain things. Let's keep it moving. And he was with her hid in the house, verse 3 again, of Yah six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. She reign over the land. Verse 4. And the, and the seventh year, Jehoiada, Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over, the, over hundreds, with the captains and the guard and brought them to him unto the house of Yah, the house of the Lord, and made a covenant with them and took an oath of them in the house of Yah and showed them the king's son. Now, Jehoiada, Jehoiada is a priest. And the uh, uh, and the seventh year, Jehoiada sent the, and fed this verse four, fetched the rulers over hundreds. See, these are the rulers over hundreds. He got the heads. 
with the captains. See that? With the rulers over hundreds, with the captains and the and the guard, and brought them to him into the house of Yah, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of Yah, and showed them the king's son. This is how come you have to talk to the leaders. So a lot of people don't understand. They busy talking to everybody else, but the heads is what's the, the key. The heads are the key. Like I keep telling y'all, when this kid, when this system fall, the heads got to fall. See, the heads over this system, Israel ain't going to rise until the heads of the uh, uh, of this kingdom falls. When I say the head, I mean the heads of China, the heads of America, the heads of the industrial complex of England. The people who are in charge that's holding everything, they have to fall in order for Israel to rise. It's just like the foam on top of beer, on top of, uh, 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 you know, I say beer. When you blow the foam off and then you had the residue, or the, the, the regular, you have the actual drink instead of the foam on sitting on top, you get the foam on and out the way. Now you're ready for the drink. You're ready for, this is, the foam has to go, which is the heads. The heads have to go. When the head drop off in the father's time, because we're not going to do it. We just want to show according with our tongue and the mouth and the pen. The pen is stronger than the sword today. Once these people fall, many of them are falling off now, whether y'all know it or not. Many of them are falling out of power. As many CEOs are falling off. Many of the people of these corporations and companies and, and banks and all over. If y'all been doing any studying or listening or researching, a lot of them are dying, not dying, but falling off. Resigning. For the things they have been doing to the public, which is the drink. You know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my bullet, the foam off the top to the people. They've been contaminating the people with understanding I'm trying to give to you. So, verse 5, 2 Kings 11, verse 5. And he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that ye shall do. This is the oath that they took. A third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. Of the king. That means that the creator, this is where he was staying at. He was staying in the temple. He's the king, Yoash, J-O-A-S-H. He was the king at the time. By him being the king, shall I say, he wasn't over anything because Ahathia, Ahathia, I think I, you know, I, I got to go back and look at her name. At at the la, at at the la, a t h a l i a h, Leah at Halia at the Leah at the Leah. Huh? Athalia. Athalia. A t h a l i a h. Athalia sounds pretty good, but Athalia. That's why I'm just breaking it down. But Athalia, that could be the name. That could say again, baby. Whatever her name is, but I'm just I'm just breaking it as I see it. But Athalia could be her name as well. It could be. I don't know. So, but the point I'm getting at, it says that uh, verse six and a third part. Well, verse five says, and he commanded them, saying, "This is a thing. This is the thing that ye shall do." A third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house, right? Which is at the temple. Verse six, a third part shall be at the gate of Shur, S-U-R, and a third part at the gate behind the guard, so that so shall ye keep the watch of the house that it be not broken down. Mean that they, no, they can't break into because somebody might find out the young king is there to try to come and kill him. And see, that's the whole point. If you look at that, the father always leave away. The father always leave away. There's always a witness, there's always a way. No different than everybody's looking for one man to come when y'all don't even realize we are that one man. We as a people, we. I had a problem with somebody. 
We are the Christ of today. Uh, uh, of today. When I say we, we are the anointed. The Father said, I'm going to send, he said, uh, in the last days, I should pour out my spirit upon all flesh. But see, Israel has already been anointed in the wilderness. That's why it talks about of 144,000. Now, 144,000 could be the seed of David. Who knows? I'm just throwing it out there like that. That 144,000 could be the seed of David. But I'm just saying, but it's 144,000 that's going to be anointed, but I am one of them because I told you I'm one of them. I was anointed in Europe three times where I was poured upon by the Spirit twice, but I was anointed. So I know what I'm talking about when it comes to that by experience. But other than that, I'm giving you scripture according to history, our history, Israel's history. That's what I'm talking to. If you're Israel or know you're Israel or trying to find that you're Israel, go to the history. Go to the Old Testament. That's our book. Our book. Our history. But verse 7. And two parts of and two parts of all you that go forth on the Sabbath, and two parts of all of you that go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of Yah. The watch of the house of Yah, which uh, the house of the Lord, about the king. I mean, y'all gonna be make sure y'all keep your watch over everything, make sure the king is safe. Verse 8. And ye shall compass the king round about, every man with his weapon in his hand, and he that cometh within the range, let him be slain. That means you can't even come near the child. Because who could be coming there unaware and trying to be slick and try to kill me? You know what I'm saying? Let him be slain, and be and be ye with the king as he goeth out and as he cometh in. Those was his bodyguards. Verse 9. And the captains over the hundreds and did according to all things, all things that Jehoiada the, the priests commanded. And they took every man his men that were that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that Say with them that should go out on the Sabbath and come to Jehoiada. Let me rephrase. Let me go back again. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all things that Jehoiada the priest commanded. And they took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that should go out on the Sabbath and came to Jehoiada the priest. He was the priest. Verse 10, verse 10, and to the captains over hundreds did the priests give King, da King David spears and shields that were in the temple of Yah. So King David had spears and shield in the temple. Verse 11, and the guard stood every man with his weapons on his hand round about the king. Excuse me. And the guard stood, and the guard stood every man with his weapons in his hand round about the king, from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. Joash becomes king over Judah. This is verse 12. Joash, J-O-A-S-H, becomes king over Judah. Verse 12. And he brought forth king, uh, the king's son. He, which is Jehoiada, and he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony and they made him king and anointed him and they clapped their hands and said, Yah, save the king. Y'all see that? This is when he was established as the king. In his seventh year, she was king. She, she was ruling six years, but in this, either the sixth or the seventh year, they anointed him and established Joash to be king. And anointed him, and they clapped their hands and said, Yah saved the king, right? Because he was what? Through the seed of David. Now, don't forget. There were other children that David, remember David had a few sons. Some of them, some of them got killed. 
Absalom uh, uh, had a few of them killed because of what had happened. Uh, um, but he was really trying to get to the one that that uh, that, uh, that 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 raped his sister. On oh, Absalom situation that is, but Absalom ended up growing them. Then certain things, a lot of things happened. But don't forget, Solomon was the main one that the seed or the kingdom was established through. Solomon had children. With the, which was split up, remember, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam and Jeroboam, they had children. And as the children grew and had the children had children, don't forget, Solomon had 700 wives. See what I'm saying? So if he had 700 wives, his seed is still growing. Then he had 300 concubines. So if he had, you know that be all these with his wives, because you have to, in order to be his wife, you had to be you had to go through compilation, which is sex. Sex is what's combined the marriage. That's the combination of the marriage. So he had 1,000 women that carried his seed. You got to understand. And I see a lot of people not, well, understand the situation. And if he had that many children, and those children had children, through Solomon, the kingdom is going to be established. See, we're looking at the kingdom as in just the kingdom in the land. But y'all forget the kingdom is the earth. The earth is the creator's kingdom. And we're coming into the day where Israel is going to rule all over the earth because the knowledge of the father, the knowledge of the creator is going to be over the earth as the waters cover the sea. So you got to understand the, seed, the sperm cells or the seed from Solomon and his thousand compared to coming through the kingship, through the rulers, should I say, coming through the rulers, it has been established through the rulers. But y'all ain't thought about all the other seeds all that is all throughout the earth that's spreading throughout the earth. See, nobody thinks about that. This is where your mind is comprised on a straight level when it's stuff going on all around you and you can't even see. Thank you, Father. You always show me stuff to see things in a whole different way than people, regular people do. Just think about it. Thousand women having a seed of David through Solomon. His kingdom going to be established. Think about that. It will broaden your mind to really think and see things in a different way. Besides what has been given to you through the Roman Empire, through you know, through the lineage that they gave you in Matthew 1 and, and, and uh Luke chapter, even though that's a false book, as far as I'm concerned, Luke chapter 3. But let's keep it moving. Here we go. Yo, I should become king over Judah. Verse 13. We got 12. We're going to do 13 now. And when after what you say, baby? I like the way you said the name. Athalia. At Athalia. Yeah, it could be the name. Athalia sounds like more promising. The pleasant sounds more fluent. But I'm trying to say it as it would say in Hebrew, but it could be. Athalia could be the name. So we'll go with Athalia. Thank you, baby. That's why you need to help me. I don't know it all. We all need help. In one way or another. But it's things I don't know. And I ain't ashamed to say it. But Thalia sounds good. And when Thalia heard the noise of the guard. And of the people. She came to the people. Into the temple. She came to the people. Into the temple of Yah. Now I don't even think she's been there. Because if she has. They would have known. That uh, they would have known that the child would be in there. But she didn't know. And when Athalia heard the noise of the guard and of the people, she came to the she came to the people into the temple of Yah. Verse 14. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar. Standing by a pillar. Seven years old. Six or seven. I'm going to say six or seven. As the manner was and the... Uh, uh, the, the king stood by the pillar as the manner was. So it must have been a certain type of manner that he had to stand in a certain place to be king. 
and the princes and the trumpeters by the by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew and trumpets and blew with trumpets. And Athaliah rent her clothes and cried, treason, treason. Don't even realize she's the one who caused the treason. Treason. Y'all committing tree. That's what this land did against the people. This land has committed treason against the people. The father gave this land to us. They have taken over the land as a corporation and has been downtrodden the people. I'm giving you understanding. 10 years ago, between now and 10 years, 2014 and today, they had started, they, they probably doing it long before, but now we can see it all on, on, on the cameras, on media, social media, how the cops been killing people, murdering people, Killing children, talking about a toy gun is in, they want to murder a little boy. You know what I'm saying? They've been killing. This system has been doing all stuff they have been doing against us, and people can't see. This system, this system has placed the women over the man. Isaiah chapter 3 and 12. The, chip, the system has placed the women over the men. Women with childlike minds. Men will sit up and try to do, women will kick a man out the house to gain benefits from him. And you know what? It was something I seen on, on a video with, uh, with uh, what's his name? Fresh and Fit, I believe it is, Fresh and Fit. This brother was sharing this information with these young ladies on the panel, right? I just want to say this real quick. I think someone shared, I think someone shared the fact that when men get money, the men thinks about the household. When men get paid, when, you, when the man gets paid, he thinks about his wife, his children, the household, the things that he needs to take care of for his family. He said, but when you women get the same thing, what do you do? It's about me, it's about the bag, and it's about all, oh, I don't need no man, I don't need this. And you're doing the opposite from what the family needs. And I thought, I think I saved that. I think I saved it. I don't remember why. I, I don't know about. Uh, I don't know if that was on Facebook or in, or Instagram. But wherever it was, I believe I saved it. That is that was powerful what he said, because that's what women do when they get with the, the 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 single women out there. Now you got a woman like mine. She wants to help. She's a help me to me. She's a help me to me. You know what I'm saying? It's not about me taking care of everything because she quite didn't do what she can, and she want to take care of a portion of something as well. And I'm thankful for that. Even though I want her to get off the job, period. But the little bit she do is good. Now, when I'm able to take care of everything totally, because I'm doing a pretty good job, but when I'm able to do everything totally, and when she feels, because I want her to feel comfortable as well, when she feels that she's comfortable enough to get away from everything and just take care of things around the home, she can do that. You know what I'm saying? But I know I have a help me that the Father has given me. I know this without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? So I don't worry. And I don't worry because I put everything in the Father's hand, in the Almighty's hand. He said, try me. And you try him by his word. That's how you try the Father. As long as you're doing the word, you try him. You don't have to come to what you, Lord, you said I don't do that. I don't have to do that. I pray to him. I talk to him. I thank him. Thank him for my son that's with me now. That's doing a lot better than he was than he, when, when he was elsewhere. I'm going to say it like that. My wife, she's great. I'm doing great. You say what, son? They're not us. They're not like us? Who is us? us, us. Who is us, us? Us. You just said Israel a few minutes too. A few minutes ago. But other than that, let's keep it moving. Verse 14 again. And when she and when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar as the manner was. However, he was supposed to stand. It was a manner behind that. And the and the princes and and the and the prince and the trumpeters by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets. And Athelia, I like saying that, Athelia rent her clothes and cried, treason, treason. 
son, she she'd been in, in, in power for so long, for six years, she thought that she was supposed to be the queen. She thought she was supposed to be, and that's what happens. We get in a position for so long, we think that it's us. And think, let me let me say one more thing real quick. Think about these jobs. And I didn't experience it, especially in Mississippi. But think about these jobs. When a woman get in place of position and power, she thinks that's her job. She thinks she oh, she thinks she's the CEO. I'm not trying to talk about women. I'm just telling you facts. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. When some women, not all. So if any of you taking offense, this pertains to you. Whoever you take, because if it don't pertain to you, you know it don't pertain to you. What I'm saying is a lot of these women, when you get in a certain position of a job, y'all, especially in the low position, like these, like, like um these uh welfare home positions, when you get when they take on certain certain positions like this, because like I said, I'm not talking about all women, certain women. When they get in it, they think that they own the place. They actually try to but well, you can't do this and you can't have this instead of trying to help you and give you all that you can get. They should be trying to help you, they should be trying to help us. Because a lot of people ain't in the position that they need to be in, but they should be trying, instead of trying to help, they try to hinder. Oh no, you can't have that. You can't have no, you can't get this and that or this and that. Or they try to hold back information. And y'all know I'm telling the truth. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. And this is y'all Athelia. Treason, treason, verse 15. But Jehoiada, the priest, commanded the captains of the hundreds, um, Let me, let me keep it going one more time. But Jehoiada, the priest, commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the host, and said unto them, have her, have her forth without the range. Without the range. Have her forth without the ranges. And him that followeth her, kill with the sword. For the priest have said, let her not be slain in the house for the priest have said, let her not be slain in the house of Yah. Have her forth and take her out. But Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds of the officers of the host and said unto them, have her have her forth without the range without the ranges and him that followed her killed with the sword. For the priests have said, let her not be slain in the house of Yah. Now it goes to uh, Athelia, Athelia is slain. Athelia is slain. Verse 16. And they laid hands on her, and she went by the way by the which the horses came into the king's house. And there was she slain. They killed her. She was slain at that time. Verse 17, and Jehoiada made covenant between the between Yah and the king and the people. Jehoiada was a righteous priest. You say what, Mike? Let my people go. Exactly. Y'all hear my son over there? He's getting into the uh, appellations of the information. 17 and Jehoiada make a made a covenant with uh covenant between Yah and the king and the people that they should be Yah's people between the king also and the people. Y'all see that? That's verse 17. Verse 18. And all the people of Yah of the land, shall I say, and all the people of the land went into the house of Baal, Baal, and and break it down. They went in the house of the devil, the house of Baal, the house of Satan, however you want to call it, and break it down. His altars and his images break they in pieces through, uh, thoroughly and slew Matin, the priest of Baal, before the altars, and, and, say, and the priest appointed officers over the house of Yah. They slew Matin, whoever that was, that whoever that priest was, he was the priest over whoever she set up. So they slew him. 
the priest of Baal before the altars and the priest uh, uh, and the priest appointed officers over the house of Yah. Verse 19. And he took the rulers over hundreds and he took the rulers over hundreds and captains and the guard and the guard and all the people of the land. And they brought uh, and they brought down the king from the house of Yah and came by the way of the gate of the guard and the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the kings and all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was in quiet. And they slew Athea with the sword beside the king's house. Seven Seven there you go. Seven years old was Yeho uh Yehoahash. Now it says Yehoahash. Seven years old was J E J E H O A A H. Now you see it saying when he began to reign. Now y'all see how they changed the name when he was a baby. He was Yelch J J O A S H J O A S H. Now he was seven years old when. Yehoash, Ye Yehoash, Y E H O A A O A S H. When he became, when he began to reign, he was seven years old when he began to reign. So this is the end of part one. Now what I'm going to do is for part two, I'm going to chronicles and do the other part of Athelia. Got to find out where is that? Where is that in here? But um. I think it's 22. Second Chronicles chapter 22. Let's just see before we get before we leave. Second Chronicles 22. Let's look over here real quick. And let's see. Second Chronicles 20. Athelia. Yep. So now in part two, we're gonna do. Okay. We're gonna do part two. Uh, part two is gonna be of uh, of uh, Second Chronicles chapter twenty two. So, other than that, for you, uh, Zoom, we're gonna pause you real quick. We'll be right back with part two. And this uh, Aziel reigns wickedly over Judah. Wait a minute, hold on. Ahazelia. Hold on, let me make sure I got this correct. Because I'm looking at the name. The name ain't correct. I'm going to make sure the name is correct. Yup. That's when she used up the throne. Okay. So it's actually 22 going into 23. That's going to be part two. So yeah, we're gonna start off with uh chapter 22. So that goes to show how Aziz, I think when he dies, what have you. And um uh, we'll, we'll see all that coming up in chapter uh in part two. Other than that, um we'll be right back with you on Zoom, which will be converted to YouTube for a full version, Rumble, and uh Patreon. See you in a few moments. Peace. And I didn't even start my recording back up. So, greetings, um, <laughs> Rumble, Zoom, what well, Zoom, which is which we are uh, returning to Rumble, uh, Patreon, and also um, YouTube, which is the full version. So I guess I'll just say it's part over again for. Uh, Instagram and for the full version. As I was saying in the beginning, part one consists of part one consists of um, well, actually this is about 2 Kings chapter 11 and 2 Chronicles chapter 22 and 23. We're just getting into part two, which is 2 Chronicles part 20, uh, 22 and 23. But this is actually speaking, this is actually when you look at it, this is breaking down the information from scripture according to the things that's going on today. The system has placed women in charge, which is just like Athelia in the scriptures. 
Athelia is in charge because she has taken over. She killed off the royal seed. The royal seed was the children of Israel from um, the kings at the time. And there was one of the royal seed, which is one of the children of uh, 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 one of the king's son that was saved by his auntie. She took him into the um, into the temple, and they, and there she fed and, and and kept them for six years. The sixth, the end of the sixth year or the seventh year, he became king, and they anointed him king. But between that, but before that time, the uh, Athelia killed off all the royal seed, the royal seed in. You'll find that in uh, 2 Kings chapter 11. So when you read that, you'll see that. But what I did is I went, my mind, spirit within took me to 1 Samuel chapter, uh, chapter, let me make sure I get the chapter right. I don't want to say it wrong. I don't want to say it wrong. I think that's chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter, I want to make sure I get it right. And I was talking in First Samuel. I was speaking about um, in First Samuel. I was speaking about uh, um, yeah, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-two and twenty-three. When it says uh, um, when it says that uh, to obey is better than sacrifice. Meaning to obey the word of the father is better than, than sacrifice. And a lot of people are worshiping a man that died on the cross as a sacrifice instead of obeying the law of the creator. And this is where the world is today. So I went from there. I went from there to 2 Samuel chapter uh, chapter 7. I believe it's 2 Samuel chapter 7. Second Samuel chapter 7. Or was it here? Yep. Chapter 7, verse 1 through 14. 1 through 17. I don't know why my eyes are looking blurry. 2 Samuel chapter 7, uh, verse 1 through uh, 17, mainly talked about the establishment of the creator's kingdom. Sta established through David, which is the branch I was sharing, is if a tree, on a tree you have many branches leaves and everything else, but on a certain branch from that tree was David, and David had King Solomon. King Solomon had Jeroboam and uh, uh, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, right, which had kings from them and had children. But you got to remember, Solomon also had a thousand women, which is 700 wives and 300 concubines. And those, out of those 700 wives and 300 concubines, he had many children because he had to lay down with them in order for them to be his wife. To be a compilation, you know, to have a compilation, a concubine, and also to uh, to be married to him. So he laid down with a thousand women that had children by him. So if you can sit back and think about how many children Solomon had through the seed of David, which David was not the king, the uh, king's son, which is Solomon. He was made king, and from his seed is where the father established the kingdom from, from David through Solomon, and through Solomon's way established the kingdom. And also the house, which is the temple, which was anointed. And every word that the father say, whether it's good, bad, evil or not, is anointed. That means it's going to happen. That's what people have to realize. So I just wanted to break all that down to come back to where we are today. So I went through 2 Kings chapter 11 and shared about Athelia's uh, 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 killing off the royal seed or the seed royal. And now... We're in the other explanation of that chapter in 2 Chronicles chapter 22. We're going to do chapter 22 and 23. <clears throat> so now let's go in and see where we at. And it's uh, Ahaziah, Ahaziah, Ahaziah reigns wickedly over Judah, right? Okay, this chapter 22, 2 Chronicles chapter 22. Ahaziah Ahaziah, uh-uh, reigns wickedly over Judah. Okay, verse one. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah his youngest son king in his stead. King in his stead. I'm looking to go for that. I'm trying to see what was beforehand, but we just want to go from where we are. Ahaziah, king, the youngest son, king in his stead. For the band of the men that came with the Arabians to the camp 
had slain all the elders. They killed all. So these Arabi, the uh, Arabians killed all the uh, the older children, the older boys. So Ahaziah, Ahaziah, the son of Yehoram, Yehoram or Yahoram, Y-E-H-O-R-A-M, Yehoram or Yahoram, king of Judah resigned. Now he resigned. He was a king, but he resigned. Verse two, 40 and two years old was Ahaziah. Okay. All the elders, so Ahaziah, the son of Yehoram, king of Judah, resigned. No, reign. I'm saying I say resigned. He reigned. Of Yehoram, king of your of Judah, reigned. I don't know why I mean resigned came from that. 42. I mean, number two. 40 and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. So he was 42 years when he began to reign as king. I don't know where resigned came in that, but he was 42 years when he began to reign. When he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. So Ahaziah, Ahaziah reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athelia. A-T-H-A-L-I-A-H. -H. His mother's name also was Athelia, the daughter of Omri. Verse 3. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. So you know Ahab was evil when he walked in uh, the name uh, uh, walk as king. He also walked in the ways of Ahab, for his mother was the counselor to do wickedly. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. You see that? So his mother counseled him to do things evil. Verse four. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of Yah. So that means that he didn't know he followed what his parents were saying. His father would whatever his mother was telling him to do. If his mother was telling him and she was uh, counseling him, he was doing what she told him to do. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of Yah, like the house of Ahab. For they were his counselors, for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. For they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. Verse 5. He walked also after their counsel and went with uh, Ye uh, Jehoram and went with Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazel, Hazel, king of Syria, and Rimoth Gilead, at Rimoth Gilead. And the Syrians smote Yoram, J O J O R A M, and Syrians smote, smote Yoram. Verse six, and he returned to be healed in Israel, and he returned to be healed in Israel because of the because of the wounds which were given him at Ramoth, when he fought with when he fought with Hazel, king of Syria. And Azra, and Azra, the son of Yehoram, Y-J-E-H-R-O-A, Yehoram, Yehoram, Jerome, Yehoram, Jerome, hmm. the son of Ahab at Israel because he was sick. Let me go back. And Ez Ezariah, the son of Yehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Yehoram, the son of Ahab, at Israel because he was sick. Yehu kills Ahaziah. Yehu kills Ahaziah. And the destruction of Ahaziah was of Yah by coming to Yehoram. So the father did this. The creator did this. And the destruction of Ahaziah, Ahaziah was of God, of Yah, by coming to Yehoram. For when he was come, he went out to Ye to Yehoram against Yehu. Excuse me. Man. He went out to Yehoram, J-E-H-R-O-A-M, against Yehu, the son of Nimshi. Whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. 
the father anointed Yehu to cut off the house of Ahab. Verse 8. And it came to pass that when Yehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab and found the prince of Judah, and found the prince of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah that ministered to Ahaziah, and, and he slew them. And her and he saw uh, and he saw Ahaziah, and they caught him, for he was hid in Samaria. And brought him to Yehu. And when they had slain him, they buried him because they cause said they. They buried him because said they. He is the son of Jehoshaphat. Okay. He is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no power to keep still, to keep still the kingdom. Let's go over that one more time. Make sure we get that understood. Verse 8. And it came to pass that when Yehu was executing judgment upon the house of Ahab and found the, pr the prince of Judah and the sons of the brethren of Ahaziah and that ministered to Ahaziah, he slew them the brethren of Ahaziah that ministered to Ahaziah, he slew them, verse 9. And he saw Ahaziah, Ahaziah, and they caught him, for he was hid in Samaria, and brought him to Yehu. And when they had slain him, they buried him. When they slain him, they buried him, because they, because they said, he is the son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the house of uh, Ahaziah, uh -uh, who sought the, the house of, who sought Yah with all his heart. So the house of Ahaziah had no power to keep still the kingdom. Now, Athelia, I'm trying to remember that name, our baby said, Athelia usurps the throne. Now, this is how Athelia comes into power. As I was sharing in uh, 2 Kings chapter 11, Athelia used the throne. Now, this only got th uh, three verses before we go into chapter 23. Athelia used the throne. She takes over the throne. Now, verse 10 says, But when Athelia, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she rose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. When she saw that they killed her son, she rose and she killed all of them. But Yeho but Yehosh Yehoshabeth, but Yehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Yoash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, and put them in his nurse that put that were slain, and put him and his nurse in the bread chamber. So uh, Jehoshabeth, the daughter of King Jehoram, Yeho Jehoram, the wife of Jeho Jehoziah, Jehoiada, 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 the priest, yeah, the wife of Jehoiada, the priest, for she was the sister of Ahaziah. Yep, I said that she was. Her, that was a. Um, uh, Hazai, that was her. Uh, that was the king's sister. Uh, that was the king's wife's sister. Which Yoram? That was Yoram's. Um, Yoash. I say that was Yoash's auntie. Hid him from Athelia. I keep saying, but um, Athelia, so that she slew him not. Verse twelve. And she was with him, hid in the house of Yah six years, and. Athelia reigned over the land. So she reigned over the land. I guess she reigned over the land uh, of, of uh, Judah and Israel because she was in Israel. I believe. Now I'm just going, I'm going off of thoughts. Because they slew, they slew Ahab. The father had uh uh um had uh come on, Mike. Had Yoash, his name, Yehu. Hey, yo, yo, Yehu killed the house of, of uh, Ahab, 
and he killed all those people off. So Athelia, I believe she was in Samaria. I believe, I'm not saying this is fact. I'm going off of theory and thought for now. So because they were doing wickedly, remember? And she was the counselor of her son. But her being counselor of her son in Samaria, this is the reason why they were doing wickedly. Now she go down and she killed all, after Yehu killed off them, she comes down to, and I'm going to give you my theory, my thought right now, because I haven't been in this in a long minute. But what she did, she came down to, to um, this is why they didn't know anything about the temple. She came down to, to Jerusalem and killed off the royal seed. Then she went back to Samaria. Now, I, I'm a hypothetically saying now, y'all can read for yourself. Now, from what I, my, my recollections in scripture, my recollections is this. She went back to, um, to uh, uh, Samaria and she was ruling over the land from there because there was no king in Judah at the time because she killed the royal seed off in Judah. <laughs> Excuse me. Now we got a seed that's growing in the temple. Because she, I was wondering why they didn't come down to the temple. Why? Because she was in Samaria. So in in the temple where uh, uh, his auntie was raising him for six years, now uh, uh, what's his name? Well, hold on, let me see. It was uh, not your not your own. What was the name of the priest? The priest. This is why he was able to call the, the captains of thousands and stuff like that and start getting them to surround the temple because the temple is in Jerusalem. But she was in Samaria, reigning over the land. Now, chapter 23, verse in the 12, uh, 12 and 22 again says, and she was with them and, and he was with them, hid in the house of Yah six years and a failure reign over the land. Now, chapter 23. Yoash becomes king over Judah. See, in, in Judea, there was no more kings because she killed all of them off. After Yehu killed all the sons and everybody off from the word of the father. But if y'all remember the book of Yehu, Yehu, he went in there and, he, and if y'all remember, y'all got to read that book too because Yehu, the father, anointed him to do one thing and uh that's another story, but I want to give you his story. Y'all have to read it. The stories of the kings are good when you really go into them and look at them. Chapter 23, Yoash becomes king over Judah. And in the seventh year, so it was the seventh year. And in the seventh year, Yehoiada, that's the name of the priest. Yehoiada strengthened himself and took the captains of hundreds, Aziah, the son of Jerom, Y-E-R-O-H-A-M and Ishmael, the son of Yehohanan, Yehohanan, Hanan, and Azariah, the son of Obed, and Manasseh, the son of Adziah, Adziah, and Elizabeth, the son of Zikri, unto Unto covenant with him. Now these are the people that the, that was over the uh, the captains and kings and stuff like that. And zero unto unto covenant with him. Verse two, chapter twenty three and two, Second Chronicle chapter twenty three and two, and they went about Yehuda and gathered the Levites out of all the cities. There you go, and gathered the Levites out of all the cities of Judah. And the chief of the fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. The chief of the fathers of Israel, and what it was it said they, they the Levites out of all the cities of Judah. Everybody in Jerusalem in Judah, they got all the, they got all the, the Levites from there, because they was over the priesthood. And the chief fathers of Israel, and they came to Jerusalem. Verse three. And all the congregation made a covenant with the king. And all the congregation made a covenant with the king in the house of Yah. And he said unto them, Behold, the king's son shall reign, as Yah hath said of the sons of David. See that? This is another king. 
Everybody only think of David, Solomon, then Jesus. No, y'all go through all these chronicles and second chronicles and first kings and second kings and see how many other kings that was reigning. reigning. Verse four, this is the thing that ye shall do. A third part of you entering on the Sabbath of the, of the priests, on the Sabbath of the priests and of the Levites shall be porters, porters of the doors. Verse five. And the third part shall be at the king's house and a third part at the gate of the foundation. And all the people shall be in the courts of the house of Yah. Verse six. But let none come unto the house of the of Yah. But let none come unto the house of Yah. Say the priests and they that minister of the Levites. They shall go in for they are holy. That's right. That's how it's supposed to be set up for the kingdom. For they are holy. But all the people shall keep the watch of Yah, of the Lord. Keep the watch of the Lord, which is the king, I do believe, of the Lord. Verse 7. And the Levites shall com compass the king round about. And the Levites shall compass the king round about. Every man with his weapon in his hand. Excuse me. So that means the Levites have weapons too. And the Levites shall compass the king round about. Every man with his weapons in his hand. And whosoever else cometh unto the house cometh into the house, he shall be put to death. But be ye with the king. But be ye with me with the king uh, when he cometh in and when he goeth out. Verse 8. So the Levites and, and all Judah did according to all things that Judah, Jehoadas, the priest had commanded, and took every man his men. Excuse me. And took every man his men that were to come in on the Sabbath with them that were to go out on the Sabbath. For Jehoiada, the priest, dis, uh, dismissed not the, the courses. He, dis, he dismissed not the courses. Verse 9. Moreover, Jehoiada, the priest, delivered to the captains of the hundred spears and bucklers and shields that had been King David's, which were in the house of Yah. All right. Verse 10. And he set all the people, every man having his weapon in his hand, from the right hand, from the right side, excuse me, from the right side of the temple to the left side of the temple, along by the altar and the temple by the king round about. Then they brought out the king's son. Then they brought out the king's son, verse 11, and put him and put upon him the crown and gave him the testimony and made him king. And Jehoiada the, the and Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and said, Yah save the king. All right. Y'all saved the king. They anointed him. Now, Athelia is slain. This is verse 12. Now, when Athelia heard the noise of the people running and, and praising the king, she came. Running and, and praising the king, she came to the people unto the house of, the, of Yah. Verse 13, and she looked and behold, the king's son, uh-uh, and she looked and behold, the king stood at his pillar at the entering in. He stood at his pillar at the entering in. Remember it said, um, by the way, in uh, part 11, it was a certain pillar in a certain situation he must have to do. And the entering and the princes and the trumpets and the princes and the trumpets by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and sounded and sounded with trumpets. Also, the singers with instruments of music and such as taught taught to sing praise 
and such as taught the same praise. Then Athelia rent her clothes and said, treason, treason, saying everybody committing treason when she committed treason. 14. And Jehoiada the priest brought out the captains of hundreds that were set over the host and said unto them, have her forth for the rain, uh, forth of the range. And whosoever followeth her, let him be slain. And, who, and whosoever followeth her, let him be slain with the sword. For the priest said, slay her not in the house of, the, of Yah. So that means that anybody go out and follow her, that means you care for her. Kill them. If y'all care for her, kill them too. Verse 15. So they lay hands on her, and when she was come to the entering of the horse gate by the king's house, they slew her there. Verse 16. Before then said, the revival through Jehoiada. The revival through Jehoiada. Verse 16 of 2 Chronicles chapter 23. And Jehoiada made a covenant between him and between all the people and between Jehoiada made a covenant between him and between all the people and between the king that they should be the they should be Yah's people. 17. Then all the people went to the house a ball and break it down and break his altars and his images and pe in pieces and slew Matin the priest of Baal before the altar. Verse 18. Excuse me. Verse 18. Also Jehoiada appointed the office the offices of the house of Yah by the hand of the priest. The Levites whom David had distributed the uh in the house the priest the levites whom david had distributed in the house of yah to offer the burnt offerings of yah as it is written in the law of moses with rejoicing and with singing as it was ordained by david or david ordained the singing and stuff like that but the the ritual was ordained by the creator 19 and and he set the porters and he set the porters at the gates of the house of Yah that none which were unclean in anything should enter in verse 20 and he took the captains of hundreds and the nobles and the governors of the people and all the people of the land and brought down the king from the house of Yah and they came through <clears throat> and they came through the high gate into the king's house and set the king upon the throne of the kingdom. 21 last verse. And all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was quiet after that they had slain Athelia excuse me Athelia which we say with the sword in verse 12 21 one more time and all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was quiet after they had slain Athelia with the sword all right then go to Yoash was seven years old so now it's talking about when Yoash and when he reigned going to be, it's up 27 verses, but y'all can see and understand when he reigned. Yoash, as long, as long, and I will say as much, as long as Yehoda was alive, he did good. Soon as Yehoda passed, so we're not going to go too far. Right now we're uh, 45 minutes in. I could go ahead on to uh, go ahead on to sharing what uh, Yoash did, but that part was about Athelia before Yoash, you know, before Yoash came, came and what she did. And the main reason, not the main reason, I opened up to that. If y'all go to part one, to see I did like this with the book, I opened up and came to that part. Now, one of the reasons why I'm sharing this information and have shared and went into that and was saying 
The women of today are like Athelia. That's probably why they cut me off. Are like Athelia. That they have taken over by the means of the system who have manipulated them to be in charge. We wasn't like that as a people or like the way the world is today as a people. Our women and men work together as one simultaneously. The men did their part, the women did their part. Not trying to say one is over the other. We do what we do. Usually, how it, was, how, it was, how it was set up, that a woman would be in her house until the man takes her from her husband. Let me rephrase that. That the man would take her from her, from her, uh, uh, from her father. The father would take care of the, the, the household. The son, he would teach how to be a, a man. The man, the young man, will grow up to be a man, to have his own household, to bring a wife into his home. So same with a uh, uh, young lady, damsel or, or, or virgin, would be home until a man comes and, and takes her from, and his father gave her away to, no, no different than the father did us, gave her away to him. And as he gave her away to him, he takes her on, and they take care, she take care of the house that he has for her. And that's marriage. But what has happened is the system has brainwashed the people, the men and the women, and has persuaded them to go through the evil route. That's why we have abortions today and every other thing that's going on out here, uh, other that's wicked, you might as well say. So I just wanted to share that to show and, and, and give you what came to my mind in all that, that by the day that we're living in is all wickedness. And you that chooses that wants to have abortion, that's for abortion, are wicked as well, whether you know that or not. You may well not want to accept the Father's word, but the Father's of life. That's why you have children to have life. Y'all laying down for fun, make sure that fun is with the man that you with. But other than that, I thank y'all for y'all time, your patience, your listening near, and your seeing eye. And we're going to smile way out. But before we do, just wanted to share with you that I am that Mikael in Daniel chapter 12. Verses one, two, three. Yeah, that's me. Showing the holy people who they're really supposed to be. Waking them out of their dead beds, which is really in their heads. For all of you who living in the new, this is for you. I'm that same Mikael in Revelation 12, battling that red dragon where Satan dwells, who deceived the whole world but prevailed not, because the horn is blown without a doubt. This was prophesied for you to see that that Mikael is really me. I thank y'all for y'all time, y'all patience, y'all listening here. We're going to smile our way out with Smile Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Ekai, Maru Shekebo, Vakuto Leolam, Vaen. Hallelujah. Hear, O Israel, Yah, our Father is one Father. Blessed be thy glorious kingdom forever and ever. Hallelujah. And don't forget, y'all, y'all can always get in contact with me right here on um, right, uh, what should I say? Y'all can email me. Y'all can email me. Y'all can also contact me uh, right here. Where am I at real quick? My new Facebook page. My new Facebook is uh, Michael M-I apostrophe, Mikael M-I apostrophe C-H-A-E-L, Mikael Harris. M-I apostrophe C-H-A-E-L space H-A-R-R-I-S. I'm going to show that to you in a few seconds. This is one of my, um, this is my new Facebook page. M-I apostrophe C-H-A-E-L space H-A-R-R-I-S. That's M-I apostrophe C-H-A-E-L space H-A-R-R-I-S. And last time, M-I apostrophe C-H-A-E-L Space H A R R I S. That's my new Facebook page. You'd like to contact me there. Can't do anything live there until I'm on 60 days. But other than that, 
Um, you can also contact me at um, email, shoot me emails. My main email is lkhyym at gmail. That's lkhyym at gmail.com. Then I'm also on YouTube underscore productions at Yahoo. That's J-U-I-C-E underscore P-R-O-D-U-C-T-I-O-N-S at Yahoo. Again, that's J-U-I-C-E underscore P-R-O-D-U-C-T-I-O-N-S at Yahoo.com. My direct number is 770-572-5315. That's 770-572-5315. Be there for a moment, and uh, my direct. I just said my direct number. I'm a little tired. I might go back and give me some more rest. And um, last but not least, that was my number seven seven zero five seven two five three one five. And don't forget, please like, share, and uh, like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Other than that, um, I'd like to thank y'all. I appreciate you. Um, see where we at right here. So um, over here on Rumble, which we're gonna, which is the long version. We'll see you soon. I thank you. I appreciate you. Love you. And I'll see you shortly. Peace.